And this will will be accomplished. You're part of the kingdom of God now that is without end. This world is not your home, but you are in the world. You are the light of the world. You are the voice. You are. Because that voice is in you. That still small voice, the word of God, the very truth, the very kingdom of God that we want to come down has come when Jesus came. Then he put the kingdom of God in you. And that will come forth out of you. For he said, if I by the finger of God would cast out devils, you'll know that the kingdom of God has come upon you. And then he tells us as a believer to cast out devils. Come on. He said, cast them out. What do you do? You do what Jesus did. How did he cast them out? By the finger of God, the Holy Spirit that happens to be in you. You're baptized in the Holy Ghost. You're baptized in you're planted in the kingdom of God. You've been translated into the kingdom of God. Then there's peace and power and joy for you. Kingdom of God comes in righteousness. It's not right when righteousness does not reign. The righteousness reigns in you. The king of righteousness that has come is living in you and with you and will not leave you. What a wonderful thing to know that we are from above now. We have been made a new creation in him. We are no longer just earthlings. We're of a kingdom that will never end. We are representatives and ambassadors of the written word of God, the spoken word of God, the still small voice of God that cannot be silent in us, that needs to come out. It needs to come out. So when the kingdom of God is in you, is allowed to be released from you, then you're going to see the kingdom of God expanding on earth as it is in heaven because it's within your heart and life. And so in order to have that expand, then what do we do? By the finger of God, we cast out devils. I remember my grandmother when I was young. She was a, a tiny little lady. I wasn't really big myself, but I had some fear of my grandmother, even though she was a frail person in the realm of the flesh. I'm telling you, she carried a big stick. <laughs> the words that she spoke, you weren't going to come against grandmother's word, because grandmother, she was to be respected and honored. And I remember her one time looking at me, and she wanted me to listen up to her. So she said, you listen here, little June. Because I had an Aunt June. And I was little June. And uh, who could stop that finger? You know what I mean? You listen here, little June. And Jesus said, if I by the finger of God to cast out devils, it's a really good thing to you know that you are clothed in his glory that you put on the Lord Jesus Christ that the hand of God may be upon you but you need to be clothed in him in his glory baptized in his spirit and then the Holy Ghost tell that devil where to go tell him where to go because I'm by the finger of God Point at the devil and tell him, you don't belong here. I give you no place. You have no authority over me. I break your power. Now you listen here, devil. You're not the voice that's commanding. You're not the king. You're not the high priest of my profession of faith. You're not my father. My father's not the liar, the thief, and the robber. My Lord and God, it 
is the sovereign, the living God, the God that heals and delivers, the God that's on my side, and there's no room for doubt and fear and unbelief because we have the fear of the Lord, because we are suited up in the armor of God, because the word of God is a sword of the fire to proceed out of your mouth, not in your hand. Point, tell the devil where to go. Because you have the power, you have the authority to cast out devils. If I buy the finger of God who cast out devils, you'll know that the kingdom of God is upon you, around you. And since he gave you that and placed you as a tree of righteousness, planted you in his kingdom that is without end, and the kingdom of God is in you, and you are in him complete, then you have the power and authority over the devil, over demons. Tell them to go. You resist the devil, and he will flee from you after you have submitted yourself unto God. We surrender everything and all to him. I like that song, All to Jesus. I surrender all to him. I freely give. And so when we surrender ourselves unto God, give him everything. You give God everything, and who gets the better deal? He's got everything. He created the world by his own mouth. Let there be, and it was. He owns the silver and the gold. What do you have that's so big and so great that God can't have it? Because when you give him your all, he will not withhold anything from you. So we freely give all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely, completely give. Without any reservation, I submit myself, my body, my soul, my heart, my spirit, my strength, my life, my family, my home, my whatever I have, unto him. Without reservation, we can have it all. We present our bodies unto Him, holy unto Him, because we're no longer common or ordinary. We are extraordinary. We're part of His body. We're part of Him. We're part of His kingdom that is without end. We're clothed in His glory. We're clothed in the Lord Jesus Christ that we put on. We've got His armor. We've got superior weapons that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We have the weapons. We have the arsenal. We've got the ammunition. We've got extra oil of the Holy Spirit to keep our lamps ever burning. Our lamps should never go out. In the temple, God said in his word that the lamps were always to be burning in the temple. It was just a building, a temple, but it was where the Spirit of God was, and there was always to be fire on the altar. Two things they could never cease, and there will be a third one. One, the lights were always to be burning, and the only way that that could happen is if they kept the oil moving. There had to be oil to cause the lamps to burn perpetually in the house of God. And fire had to be on the altar, so that meant that there would always be fuel on the altar to make sure that there was always fire on the altar that was never to go out. And then third, that was always, perpetually, day and night, to be a sacrifice on the altar. There was the morning sacrifice, and there was the evening sacrifice that kept that sacrifice perpetual. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. 
we bring sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. Night and day, night and day, that we praise him. Praise him in the morning, praise him in the evening, praise him at the supper time. Praise him, praise him, glorify him. Bring the sacrifice of praise and bring yourself, bring yourself night and day. Early in the morning, the mercies you see as you approach him. And give to him your all in all. I surrender all this morning before I get out of bed, before I face the next onslaught of the enemy. Before I hear another word of man, I'm hearing the word of God. I'm presenting my body, my soul, my spirit, my life, my everything and all as a sacrifice unto you, Lord. Coming before your very presence, the very throne room of God before the throne of grace and mercy to find help in time of trouble, which is always on every side, by the way. The devil's relentless, but he's not your God. So you bring that sacrifice to him of yourself. Present yourself a living sacrifice. Oh, let me repeat that. Present your whole self unto him as a living sacrifice oh. holy and completely like him and then bring the sacrifice of yourself unto him as the evening offering morning and evening and don't worry about the in between because that evening sacrifice will be ever burning on the perpetual fire of God, on the altar of God, in the temple of God, where the lights are ever burning because of the oil of the Holy Spirit that keeps the lamps burning in your life. For guess what? The body that you're presenting before God is a living sacrifice is also the temple. You are the temple of God, the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of God, the Son of God, who came to dwell in you by faith that he gave you. It is the word of faith that you have heard. You heard about Jesus. You heard about the Savior. You would not be saved without hearing the word of God. You would not be saved without a revelation of Jesus Christ. By the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, that revealed Jesus unto you. And then you simply received him. You said, if you come to him, he will not cast us out. No way. If we ask him to come in, as he knocks on our heart's door, he will come in and he'll stay. And he bought you with a price. He owns you. You happen to be the temple. Your body's the temple. Your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit that indwells you. It is the dwelling place of God, the habitation of God. You have prepared and made a habitation of God. It's not a physical building made of bricks and mortar. It is your body that's the temple of God, the Holy Spirit. He owns it. And we present ourselves unto him. And where is the altar? It's within you. If you are the temple of God, then the altar of sacrifice is within you. In the kingdom of God that is within you, and you are the temple of God and a habitation of the Lord. He inhabits the praises of his people. We're going right back to that. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. And that may be our in gathering in a building in a tent, in a place of worship, in a house, wherever we have designated to be, the house of prayer, the house of God. But then you're the house of God. And 
when we bring that sacrifice of praise, it must be in that temple, your temple, not sealed up. Let it out. We bring it out. Work it out. Work out your salvation with fear and trouble. Salvation is of the Lord. Those wells of salvation are in you. They make you glad. Don't just keep it down. Let it out. Let it out. Let it flow. Let the flow of the Spirit of God of your innermost being will flow. Rivers of living water. Let that praise come out of you as a sacrifice of praise. And you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is in you to give you the oil of joy. To constantly keep the lights burning. Keep the lights burning in you. So that perpetually, when he tells you you are the light of the world, if you let the light go out, that means you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to fuel the lamps. Let the lamps be ever burning so that the lights continually burn because he wants you to be as a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. No! We cannot let the lights go out. No! We cannot let the fire from the altar of God go out. No! We cannot let one sacrifice be enough. The Apostle Paul presented himself before God every day, dying daily, that he would live in the presence of God, the power of God, the Spirit of God, the Word of God, and be a vessel of honor that God could use. As we presented ourselves before him once upon a time, it's not enough. It's not enough to just give yourself to God one time and that's it. Because everything out there is vying for your attention. Everything else wants to own you have a part of you take over you. The Bible calls us not to give any place to the devil, and that comes in many other facets. But when we give ourselves to God morning and night as a sacrifice, then we are going to have perpetual fire on the altar. And the oil of the Spirit when we are filled with this spirit. The Bible tells us to be filled with this spirit. Be filled with this spirit. Now your you know, most being will flow rivers of living water. The spirit of God, light, abundance. So that's what we are to be every day, every night, every minute. That we are ever burning ever filled, ever powerful, always reminding ourselves that we may be in the world, but we're not of the world, that we are part of the eternal, everlasting kingdom of God, representing the king, representing the word of God, representing the laws of God. And he tells us, in Psalm 119, talks so much about the law of God, the word of God, how, how wonderful this word is. And that when we dwell on that word and live that word, that word will live all around us. That word will become that sovereign word. That word will become that word of healing and deliverance. And, and the word that God spoke makes you clean. The word of God in your heart that you will not sin against him. The word of God is powerful. It's fire. Fire on the altar. When you sacrifice yourself and you got the fire of his word on the altar, the fire of his love, the fire of his Holy Spirit, it's going to keep the lamps burning fiery hot. And it's going to erupt out of you like a volcano. Just like Jeremiah said, Oh, earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. And then he said, 
I don't have to speak that word anymore. They're persecuting me. They're not receiving it. I'm done. That word in him was a fire. Just come out. I couldn't restrain it. I couldn't keep it down. It's burning in me. It just flowed out of him like fire. And all around him, he couldn't restrain it. We don't want to put a cap on it. We want to put a cap on the Spirit of God. Let the Holy Spirit flow out of you. Life. Power. Let your light be bright. Let your word be the word of God, which is spirit and life. Remember, you are of God. You are his offspring. Not because you've been born into this earth, but because you've been born again. You are a new creature. You are an eternal creature, an eternal life, an eternal word, with eternal power, an eternal purpose. And that needs to be not someday, but everywhere. Not somewhere, but everywhere. Even as He is ever present, all knowing, all powerful infinite in understanding, so shall he who is that in you, baptized into his body, his spirit, his fire, so that we are like him. We are complete in him. Nothing missing. Nothing. He'll satisfy the desire of your heart. And that's where he is. He that begun a good work in you will do what with it? Complete. Yeah, finish the good work. Was it a good work that he started? Yeah. Complete it. Because he's God. Not just because he can, but because he will. He tells us when the builders would start to build. They need to count the cost to see if they had the goods to finish that because if not, they had just started something they couldn't finish. I knew a builder one time in Michigan and he began to build, he bought property and he was going to build a house for himself and his family. And he never got past the basement. He would go by his property and you would just see a little bit above the ground and some windows like that in basements, but he never built the house. And he was a builder building other people's houses, but he never built his own. And it was a rock break. And whether it was because he didn't have the money to do it or the energy to do it, he had the vision to do it, but he didn't even do it. And when he died, the basement and property was still there with no house on it at all. And that's not how it should be. You know, we, we can build the kingdom of God, but the kingdom of God is in us. And he wants us to know we're his workmanship. This is come to cost. See if you can complete it. Well, I don't know what happened to that builder if he counted the cost and couldn't complete his own house. He was building everybody else's. But I'll tell you what. Jesus counted the cost. The Father counted the cost when he gave the Son. The Spirit of God knew the cost of your salvation. And he paid Christ in full. Salvation, healing, and deliverance is all one element together. He paid it all. He counted the cost. He paid the price for you and I. And so we don't have to count that cost. We receive the benefit of what he's already paid for.